Today Mike and I have come to the uh, open gardens at the walled garden at Sal in Norfolk near Reefham for some inspiration. The walled garden is managed by three gardeners and it's absolutely stunning. I love the gravel paths and with the box hedging either side. It makes it a really nice garden to walk around. Particularly spectacular is this beautiful pink flower here, which I think is grown as a cut flower. I have absolutely no idea what it is. I've seen the blue variety before. If you know what it is, please pop the answer in the comments. I'd love to get some of this in my own garden. I love the way that they've mixed the vegetables and the flowers together. This planting here is particularly beautiful. You've got the runner beans here, which are in full flower and producing uh, beans. And then you've got these lovely yellow flowers below, which are covered in bees and are self-seeding. I think it's a type of calendula, but I've not seen this variety before. It's a really large variety and I absolutely love it. If you know which variety it is, please pop it in comments. I think it may have been planted here to distract the butterflies and the aphids. As you can see, there's a butterfly on here from the vegetables all around some of which are netted to prevent butterflies laying their eggs on them. I think they've netted these to prevent uh, birds eating them and possibly squirrels. We've got some beautiful lettuces growing here. Look at those. Not sure what, I think they may have carrots under the netting here. So the netting's probably to prevent carrot root fly. I think the scent of the calendula may uh, help in distracting the carrot root flies and covering up the scent of the carrots. I'm just going to walk you down the gravel path so you can get the full effect of this beautiful wall garden in the sun. There's lots of calendula planted everywhere and they're absolutely spectacular. There are varieties here that I've never seen before. I must catch, see if I can catch one of the gardeners and ask them what variety it is. It's a very large calendula here. There must be about three foot in height and lovely yellow flowers as well as the more traditional orange calendulas over here. And as you can see, they're alive with insects, butterflies, bees. They absolutely love them. Let's see if we can go closer on this one. It's a very pretty butterfly here. Behind me, they have the sweet pea crop, which is looking gorgeous. Lots of flowers still to pick on here. To keep the sweet peas flowering, you need to pick them regularly. If you don't pick them, they very quickly run to seed and you won't get any more flowers. We've got a fabulous onion crop here. It's probably benefited from the quite wet spring followed by the lovely sunny uh, July. And obviously in a wall garden like this, it's very sheltered. So it's really good for growing vegetables and flowers. Next to the calendula, they have a large planting of cosmos. Cosmos is another very easy to grow fl uh, flower, which will grow happily from seed directly sown into the ground, or you can grow them in pots and plant them out later. It's very bee and insect friendly as the flowers are wide open and you can see there's a, there's a wasp here on this one of these flowers. They come in a lovely variety of colours, although I must admit I love the white ones and also these cerise ones. What a wonderful colour. Next to the cosmos they have a lovely planting of these burns coloured um, sunflowers. I'm not sure which variety this is, but they're very happy growing in this wall garden. They, they get quite to about five or six foot. I'm not sure what they're planning to plant in this corner, but as you can see, there's masses of manure being put onto the soil, which is probably one of the secrets to why everything is growing so well in this garden. Another view of these beautiful, beautiful sunflowers. I can give you a long view down the border. It's absolutely stunning and it's just full of butterflies and bees. This is clearly a very productive uh, kitchen garden. It's got lots of cabbages growing here under nets to keep the butterflies off them. And these beautiful, what I think might be kale. Yes, they're la very carefully, very kindly labelled them. Let me show you the label. Kale Nero de Toscans. So I've also got another dark leaf vegetable here which looks very similar to the kale, which is labelled differently. So that one is 
Boracol Black Tuscany. I've never seen these vegetables growing like this before and it's not a vegetable I've seen in the supermarket either. Um, it clearly loves growing in this wall garden and the netting protects it. Having said that, there's netting over here, but have a look here. And this butterfly has still managed to get through the netting and is inside the net, probably looking for somewhere to lay its eggs. Because caterpillars love to eat these sort of uh, brassicas and cabbages and these uh, dark green leaved vegetables. So I'm just going to walk you back into the wall garden through this lovely archway. Just to get the long view, this is a really big wall garden and it's incredibly sheltered in here. Over here there's a nice collection of penstemons. Penstemons are very easy to grow and they seem to particularly like the Norfolk climate. And they produce these lovely flowers and they've got a huge variety of colours. I particularly like this apple blossom coloured one over here. It's very pretty. If you deadhead them as they go over, you can see the deadheads here, then you'll, they will repeat flower for a long period. And sometimes I've managed to keep pen stem and flowering right up until uh, November and even early December in a mild year. Over here we have a big clump of agapanthus that are just about to start flowering. It's a really large flowered variety. As you can see, the heads on the flowers are huge and the leaves are enormous. So in a couple of weeks, these will probably be spectacular. In this end of the garden, they've got a large planting of herbs. Oh, and as you can see, there's another agapanthus back there, another large flowered white variety. And a verbena bonaris is planted beautifully with these grasses and again, covered in butterflies. It's a good planting for wildlife. I'll just take you along the herb border. Herbs are very good for encouraging bees and butterflies into your garden. As you can see, there's lots of insects all over these plants. The colours are just beautiful. Herbs are a very good choice for growing in, in this country, particularly in Norfolk, um, as we have very dry summers generally. Herbs being Mediterranean, mainly Mediterranean plants are very drought resistant, also very pollinator friendly. I always love seeing a large lavender planted in a, a ward garden. The scent is lovely and again, the insects love it. The butterflies and the bees are all over it. We seem to have a lot of these bumblebees this year. Let's see if I can focus in for a close-up. There's quite a lot of them on the lavender. not seen chives growing like this before but I might copy this idea. I tend to grow mine in clumps but actually they're very nice grown in a drift like this. And I think that's a curry plant behind with those lovely yellow pom-pom flowers and then there's lots of thyme. It's always a good one for a cottage garden or a dry garden. It gives you a lovely scent. It can be used in the in your cooking. Lots of different varieties from this little small leaved lemon coloured one to these larger leaf varieties. Lots of flower and very pollinator friendly. These rosemary plants clearly love being in a wall garden. Again these, this plant is hardy in Norfolk and this is actually one enormous plant that's being grown in a pot. Um, I've not seen it grown like that before unless the pot's just supporting it. This is a lovely thing to see in a wall garden. It's a nectar in tree. Probably. And because this wall garden is so sheltered, this fruit should ripen. It's absolutely covered in fruit. And you can pick them and eat them, or you can leave them for the birds and the insects. I think I'd be picking them and eating them. But look, this one particularly looks incredibly beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, this is something I'd love to have in my own garden. Look at these fabulous coal frames. These are really good for starting stuff off in early. You can start your plants off in the spring with these coal frames. They give them a bit of extra protection. And then when you want to harden them off, you just open the, the coal frames up in the day and gradually you can harden your plants off. I think we could probably build something similar to this out of palace. So I might have a word with Mike and see if he can build me a cold frame. It's 
so I can start vegetables off early next year and flowers. Wow, look at this enormous display of Verbena banaris. This is a real wow way to grow it and I, I think I might copy this next year. It loves being grown without any competition and as you can see the butterflies and the bees just love it. There's lots of insect activity all around. Just going to show you the uh, butterflies if they you can creep up on some of them. It looks like a new dawn. New dawns are very reliable climbing rows. It's not too vigorous, but it will get to about eight or 10 feet like this one has if trained of a wall or a structure. And it will keep on repeat flowering if you deadhead it right through until December, till the first sort of hard cold weather. is hardy in this walled garden. There are so many really good ideas here. I love this where they've taken a, an old water tank and they've made it into a small uh, water garden uh, by putting in some uh, water lilies. I might try this because we have quite a lot of old water tanks. And just look at this phenomenal row of greenhouses. The probably Victorian greenhouses all along this wall in beautiful condition, fully, fully restored and in use, growing tomatoes and peppers and lots of other things, I'm sure. So let's have a look inside the greenhouses and see what they're growing. A greenhouse like this will take a lot of watering. The garden employs two and a half full-time equivalent gardeners um, and also has two volunteers. It's incredible what they've done, what they've achieved here. It's absolutely stunning. Look at all this. The tomatoes are ripening beautifully on the vines. And over here, they've got to, harvested their garlic crop. Over there, we have more tomatoes. And it's lovely to see that they too grow their tomatoes in grow banks. I think the plant pots placed above are for watering. It means they can fill up the plant pot with water so they can get plenty of water into the grow banks. That's such a good idea. We're going into the second greenhouse now. And in here they have lots of flowering plants like geraniums, as well as uh, flowering cactus. Oh, and the roof is just covered in vines with grapes on. I've never seen anything so beautiful. This, this vine must be very old. It's absolutely dripping in grapes. Isn't that spectacular? Here they've got um, cucumbers trained against the wall on these strings. And they're covered in large cucumbers. As you can see, there's one there ready for harvest. I'm just going to take you to look at these vines though. They really are incredible. Look how thick the vine is. If you follow it up, look at that. Isn't that amazing? And just just runs the whole length of this greenhouse. It's a real treat to see that. I've never seen such a healthy looking vine. It's very inspiring. Look at this phenomenal cactus. I would love, love, love to have a greenhouse like this. It certainly inspired me. The grapes give a lovely, gentle canopy which reduces the glare of the sun. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a good idea. Whether or not they'll be able to eat the grapes, I don't know, but actually it's very warm in here. And look, these grapes are, are ripening. They've got red ones up here. I love seeing these in old greenhouses. Somewhere to fill your watering can from. And when you go outside, the gutters that run all along the back of the greenhouse empty and go down internally into these troughs that hold the water. So that's such a good reuse of the water from the roof. Just showing you the long views again through the wall garden. 
And look at this middle border. It's just a mass of colour. Orange and yellow are the predominant colours at this time of year in these hot borders. Lots of day lilies, which give incredible colour at this time of year. Another view back to the greenhouses. This garden just keeps getting better and better. It's a real example of, of how you can plant for late summer colour. The phlox is a very reliable plant for late summer. And again, if you deadhead it, it'll repeat flower. You just get these beautiful flowers. I love these grasses planted here in the gravel with the daisies beyond. They're so pretty and they move beautifully in the gentle breeze. This is interesting. The wisteria in the wall garden on this wall is still in flower. All our wisterias are finished, but this one's actually had a second flush by the look of it. Either that or it's a very late variety. That's lovely to see. Over here, the cardoons are in full flower. Again, these love the dry, sunny, sheltered conditions in the wall garden. This is a really lovely uh, combination planting of Achillea. I particularly like this bright cerise coloured one. Must look out for that. This has to be one of the best wall gardens I've ever visited. Even better than the National Trust ones at Falberg and Blickling. This is a private garden and it's managed by the family and two and a half full-time gardeners and two volunteers and it is just incredible. The garden is stunning, it's productive, it's a really good example of a walled garden restored to its former glory and it's very inspiring. I love these grasses over here, they look lovely in cut flower arrangements and they move beautifully in the, in the breeze. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the walled garden. If you have any questions, post them in comments and we'll do our best to answer them. We're feeling very inspired. I'd love to own a walled garden like this. It's just incredible. It would be a joy, joy to own, although I think we would need some help. Because there's a lot of work looking after a garden of this size with this many plants. Look at this beautiful pear tree. It's just so much to see. We could just keep on and on. I couldn't finish without having a look at this. I have absolutely no idea what they're growing here. It looks like some form of squash, but they're actually growing it up a wall. Just pop in and see if I can see there's a label on it. The label says gourd swan. So I'm imagining it's some sort of ornamental gourd, which will fruit in the autumn. Never seen anything like that before. Just look at these fabulous cabbages. It's a very productive kitchen garden. I'm going to have to finish now as the garden's getting quite busy. It's open for charity today uh, to raise funds for the East Anglia Air Ambulance, which is a local charity. Hope you've enjoyed watching. If you've enjoyed our videos, please hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.